We'd like to begin with, as our, our tradition, the national anthem sung by our doctoral student, Neville Donaldson. Please rise to join in the national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in gave proof to the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Devin passed his dissertation proposal defense this past winter, which means that he's nearing graduation. This troubles me. <laughs> His advisor is Paul Conway. Paul, stand up for a second. I told Paul, <laughs> I've told Paul that under no circumstances is Devin to graduate. <laughs> Unless Paul can convince Bruce Springsteen or perhaps Aretha Franklin to enroll and sing at future events. I haven't seen much progress, Paul. <laughs> I'm troubled. But that's not Devin's fault. Devin, thank you so much. Congratulations. I would also like to give my greetings to Mrs. Donaldson, who attends all of Devin's performances. As a result, she's attended more graduation ceremonies than I think any other parent here. <laughs> Speaking of families, Thank you to all of the extended families and friends who are here today to celebrate the accomplishments of your students. Over the last two years and sometimes longer, you've shown encouragement, generosity, and support. Your excitement today probably matches that of your graduates. In a few minutes, you'll be applauding their names as we read them. But right now, we want to give the families and friends Thanks for their love and support. From the graduates to their families and friends, thank you. I would also like to expend, extend a special welcome to all the friends and families who are joining us today for the commencement through our first live streamed webcast of a graduation. For example, I understand that Gerard Laput is in Paris with his family watching right now, where he went to attend the CHI conference. Greetings to Gerard, his family, and all the other graduates who weren't able to be here but are joining us through the webcast. Congratulations to you all. Here at UMSI, we do much more than study information. We prepare leaders who will revolutionize the connections between people, information, and technology. Through our richly interdisciplinary program, our students acquire the knowledge, skills, experience, and professional network that will equip them to build a better world. The investment we've made in you and that you've made in us is now about to pay off. You are an extraordinary group of people. 
We expect great things from you. Congratulations, class of 2013. As you all have heard many times, at Michigan we define ourselves as the leaders and the best. Our graduates are prepared to assume leadership roles in your chosen fields and to make a difference in the world. Many of you have already shown outstanding leadership inside the classroom and outside while you were here. You may not realize it, but the School of Information itself has played a significant and growing leadership role in this great academic institution, the University of Michigan. For a small school, in numbers of students and faculty, we're about 16th of the 19 schools and colleges. For a small school, we have had a disproportionate number of our own faculty plucked from our ranks to fill top posts at the university. <laughs> I didn't think it was a joke. <laughs> Wait, do you hear my real jokes? For example, Dan Atkins was the first dean of the School of Information and later served four years as the university's associate vice president for research cyber infrastructure. His successor as dean, John King, left us to take on the role of vice provost for academic information and later served a term as vice provost for strategy. Indeed, altogether, and if you permit me a bit of double counting, we count among our current faculty seven current or former deans of UMSI or other units the former chief information officers of two great universities, four former vice provosts or vice presidents of this university, and a former vice provosts or vice presidents, and one former provost. This Sunday, two days from now, we celebrate the remarkable accomplishment of another of our faculty colleagues. My immediate predecessor as dean of UMSI and a professor in our school was Martha Pollack. She was lured away to become Vice Provost for Academic and Budgetary Affairs in 2010. Today, we have lured her back to provide some words of inspiration as you leave us to become leaders yourselves. Martha Pollack is a professor of computer science and engineering and a professor of information. Until Sunday, she is still the university's Vice Provost for Academic and Budgetary Affairs. From 2007 to 2010, she was the Dean of SI, and from 2004 to 2007, she served as Associate Chair of Computer Science and Engineering. Before coming to Michigan in 2000, Martha was a professor at the University of Pittsburgh, and before that, she was a member of the technical staff at SRI International in Menlo Park, California. Martha is an elected fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science and of the Association for Computing Machinery and of the Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence. She has conducted research and published widely on topics in artificial intelligence. A particular focus of her work has been the design of intelligent technology to assist those with cognitive impairments. Martha has served as the Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Artificial Intelligence Research, as President of the Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence, as a member of the Advisory Committee for the National Science Foundation's Computer and Information Science and Engineering Division, and as a member of the Board of Directors of the Computing Research Association. She earned her bachelor's degree at Dartmouth College and master's and doctoral degrees at the University of Pennsylvania. When Martha left the School of Information to become Vice Provost, she explained her decision to leave the UMSI community like this. Life sometimes brings unexpected opportunities, and the chance to serve the university in a wider role is one I couldn't resist. Well, Martha, there you go again. <laughs> She's now leaving her position as vice provost to serve the university in an even greater capacity. Starting Sunday, Martha Pollack becomes the University of Michigan's provost and executive vice president for academic affairs. For those of you unfamiliar with university organization charts, the provost is the chief academic officer, second in rank only to the president. The provost is also my boss, <laughs> which is a very scary thing, considering the dirt Martha has on me from our days as colleagues here. In light of her new position, 
We are very grateful that Martha found time in her already full schedule to be here today to address our graduates. We're very proud to welcome back our friend, our colleague, my boss, and now everyone's boss, Martha Pollack, <laughs> the next provost of the University of Michigan. Thank you, Jeff. I, I do have a lot of dirt on him, it's true. <laughs> um, I'm, I am really delighted to be here. Um, you know, as Jeff said, I was his predecessor of, as dean of what I used to call SI, and I'm going to do my very best to say UMSI, and if I slip, you'll, you'll forgive me. But being here today really is like coming home. Um, I know this is a, a very special event for everyone, especially, of course, for the graduates. I'm sure you're feeling so proud, and, and, and justifiably so because you've successfully accomplished what you set out to do when you started at SI several years ago. I know that every single one of you has worked hard to get here, and I want personally to congratulate each of you. Now, I imagine that over the next few days, you're going to be attending various celebrations. And I predict that at each one of them, there'll be a great aunt or a friend of a friend who's going to look at you, pack their head slightly, and say, you got a degree in information? <laughs> well, what does that mean? Isn't all of college study about information? I, I'm pretty confident about this prediction, because I remember the questions and the odd looks that I used to get when I would tell people that I was the dean of information. <laughs> I'm sure that all of you graduates have good answers to these questions. If not, Jeff and the other SI faculty haven't been doing their job. I'm sure you'll talk about the profound changes that have occurred over the past 20 years in the ways in which we collect, store, analyze, and disseminate information. You'll point out that the amount of information available to us today is massively greater than ever before. And you'll probably go on to talk about the myriad possibilities that have been opened up by information technology. How with just a few clicks, you can read about the latest developments in medical science, take a course on fantasy and science fiction from a leading college professor interacting in real time with other students from around the world. Find a community of people with similar interests in vintage jewelry or fly fishing or whatever your interests are. Or follow tweets about breaking world events that are posted by people who previously were denied a political voice by their governments. Then you'll likely go on to talk about the specific skills you've developed at SI. The ability to design interfaces that make access to information easier or to oversee the management of records in large organizations or to analyze the flow of information across networks. And I hope you'll be able to talk about the job you've already landed, where you'll put those skills to good use. Uh, if you haven't quite landed a job yet, don't worry. I know that the SI Career Services is here to work with you. Those are all really good answers to your great aunt's questions. And certainly, the specific skills that you've learned as an SI student are really important. But having spent some time here, I want to suggest that you've also learned a number of other lessons that are going to serve you extremely well. First, you've learned to challenge yourself. When you came here, you might have known how to program a computer, or maybe you were good at writing and giving presentations, or maybe you had some experience in project management. But almost certainly, you weren't equally comfortable with all those types of activities. And yet, during your studies here at UMC, you were pushed into experiences where you had to develop all those skills and more. I hope that you discovered that you're up to the challenge of doing things outside of your comfort zone, and that this has increased your self-confidence. My own personal experience has been that you really just don't know what you're capable of unless you stretch yourself, unless you take on roles that you're really not quite sure you're ready for. As Jeff mentioned, um, I'm starting a new job this Sunday. And as that day rapidly approaches, I keep reminding myself of what T.S. Eliot once said. If you aren't in over your head, how do you know how tall you are? <laughs> but he's right. Second, I know that you've learned to work with people who have very different backgrounds and perspectives. UMSI emphasizes collaboration and teamwork for a good reason. 
because the real world runs on collaboration and teamwork. I suspect you've come to appreciate the power that a well-functioning group has in tackling complex problems that would stymie a single individual. My bo well, my boss through tomorrow likes to cite what I think is a really wonderful African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I'm sure that UMSI has taught you how far you can go if you work as a team. The third lesson is especially important. If you've been a student here, you've learned how to color outside the lines. One of the things I've always loved best about this school is that it's filled with intellectual risk takers, faculty and students who could have been in a traditional computer science or economics or psychology department or a traditional business or library school, but who chose instead to come to a school that does things differently, bringing multiple disciplinary approaches to the study of information. You've seen that it's OK not to be restricted to one disciplinary framework or one set of methods, that you can make real progress by combining different insights, by doing things a little differently. You've learned to put people first. SI's motto has long been connecting people, information, and technology, not connecting information, technology, and people, or technology, people, and information, or any of the other permutations of that phrase. At UMSI, you've learned to start by asking what it is that people need, letting that lead you to an understanding of the best way to use information and technology. I sure hope you've learned to laugh a lot. I, I gather with Jeff as dean, it would be hard not to learn to laugh a lot. Um, while UMSI is an outstanding academic institution, it's always been someplace where people have had an awful lot of fun. Having fun matters, and I really hope that while you go on to have a life full of many accomplishments, you also go on to have a life brimming with joy and laughter. And finally, I'm quite certain that you learn to think big, aim high, and strive to do good. As I was once a library school, and that beginning has really shaped its ethic of public service. Today, the school has an incredibly strong commitment to making a difference in, a world, in the world. In fact, the school's mission statement reads, we create and share knowledge so that people will use information with technology to build a better world. It's true that many mission statements go unread or unused, but SI shapes and animates the school. People here really do think big, recognizing that it is essential if you want to make meaningful, lasting change. And this being UMSI, people don't stop with thinking big, they act big. Using all the, school, all the skills the school teaches, Faculty, students, and alumni work on improving healthcare delivery, increasing transparency in government, preserving culture, and improving education. In your coursework, your, intern your internships, PEPs, your experiences on alter alternative spring break, from the many interactions you've had with your teachers and your fellow students, from all of these, you've learned how to give form and substance to your ideas. You've worked hard, you've done good work, and now you're ready to go out and do it on your own. You've honed the skills that will enable you to approach the world, its challenges, and its opportunities with confidence and conviction. You're ready to make contributions that will indeed make a difference. As you leave, you take with you the lessons that come from SI's very soul, if you will. Keep people in the forefront of your thinking. Embrace challenge. Value diversity. Think unconventionally. And laugh a lot. The SI that I know aspires to produce graduates who engage in work of lasting value, work that builds and sustains our society, work that matters to your communities. I am so proud to say that I am still a UMSI faculty member, and I am so proud to congratulate each of you as a new graduate of the school. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. It's now my pleasure to introduce Terrence O'Neill, the president of the SI Masters Association, who will address the graduates. Hi, everyone, and thank you for coming. Your effort in being here today is one of many ways that you have supported us graduating students. The support we students have received from you is tremendous and has enabled us to pursue this education. The support that we graduating students feel also comes from one another. 
getting to this day has been a group experience. <laughs> we have spent a lot of time together, occasionally to the chagrin of our family and friends. And during that shared time, we have experienced a particular type of education, one defined by engaging friendships, community involvement, and working adventures that have led us outside this block where the school sits, onto DC, Jordan, Silicon Valley, and Detroit. I know these adventures will continue, and I look forward to hearing about them from my classmates. In forming these relationships, we have learned about how we think about topics, how we act under pressure, and how we smell after a nine-hour group meeting <laughs> where the only circulation was provided by the fans of our laptop computers. <laughs> Sometimes it has been difficult. We've all been tested in many ways and developed responses to the challenges of SI. We've learned advanced time management techniques, such as having a friend ping you on Google Chat, and if you are procrastinating, you owe them 25 cents. <laughs> We've also learned how important it is, if you've been struggling with a problematic block of computer code, to take a break, watch a TV show, and call your friend or teammate. We've learned to lean on and help one another, and that will serve us well with the people we'll work with in the future and as these friendships continue to develop. The collective bond has only been strengthened by the richness of perspective we have here at UMSI. Whether your future leads you to user testing on that ideal new computer appliance smell at Amazon Apple Corporation, <laughs> or to become an embedded school media library specialist for emerging technologies, <laughs> or to mind big data, big government, you are equally a part of the School of Information and have contributed vitally to the exchange of ideas here. There's a specific commonality of this graduating class. To paraphrase something I heard from Jane Davis, fellow graduate here today, everyone at UMSI actively wants to improve something for other people, whether it's the little differences in website functionality that aid a person in finding what they're looking for, or helping to make moments of history accessible and relevant through effective archives. We are focused on improving the connection between people and information. I have been so happy to spend my time here, and you all made that happen. Thank you. I would now like to welcome to the stage, I guess they're right over here, <laughs> up to the podium, Jeffrey Mackey Mason, Dean and Professor, Thomas Finholt, Senior Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and Professor, Douglas Van Howling, Associate Dean for Research and Innovation and Professor, and Judy Lawson, Assistant Dean for Academic and Student Affairs. Tom. We thought to turn off the building fans to toughen up our students. We forgot about the laptop fans. <clears throat> Next year. We are now going to recognize our PhD graduates. The PhD is the highest degree conferred by the School of Information. It requires years of hard work, typically four, five, even seven years of intense, often solitary hard work. It is so that these people can prepare to become leaders in intellectual scholarship as the future generators and disseminators of knowledge who will help us build a better world as information professionals. In recognition of their intellectual accomplishments and the enormous effort that they have engaged in, 
we call out each of the PhD graduates individually to recognize their accomplishments. I would like to ask the graduates to join us on stage as I call out your name. Radhapat Chong Tamakun. Okay. Hay earned her undergraduate degree and her master's degrees in Bangkok, Thailand. In 2006, she was awarded a Royal Thai Government Scholarship to pursue graduate studies here at the School of Information. She earned her MSI in 2008, specializing in information economics, management, and policy. Following that, she entered our doctoral program, where her research has focused on digital government and information technology for development. As a doctoral student, she was awarded the Barber Scholarship, a Rackham Graduate Student Research Grant, and a Rackham International Research Award. Her dissertation advisors were John King and Steve Jackson, and her dissertation is entitled ICT Development, ICT Development and Organizational Change in the Thai Public Sector. Pei will be returning to Thailand and to her position as Director of the Electronic Information Group at the Information Technology Center. Please join me in congratulating Radhapat Chongatamakun. And Thea Josius. Thea Josias earned her undergraduate and master degrees in South Africa. Before coming to Michigan in 2006 to begin her doctoral studies, she worked for two years at the Nelson Mandela Foundation as a senior project officer. Among the grants and fellowships she received during her time here at Michigan are a Fulbright Scholarship and an Africa Initiatives Fellowship. She has been both a graduate instructor and a graduate staff assistant, coordinating a digital preservation coordinating digital preservation internships for the Engaging Communities Project. And Thea's academic advisor was Margaret Hedstrom, and her dissertation is entitled Methodologies of Engagement, Locating Archives in Post-Apartheid Memory Practices. She is now a postdoctoral researcher and scholar at Michigan State University's Matrix Program, where she will also work with the university's history department, supporting the production of online history courses. Congratulations. To Anthea Josias. <laughs> Zhao Lu. After graduating from Renmin University in China, Zhao Tracy Liu was accepted into the PhD program at the School of Information. Using information economics and experimental methods, Tracy studied mechanisms to motivate participation and high quality contribution on crowdsourcing sites, as well as the effect of social identity and stereotypes on cooperation. Her dissertation under the guidance of her advisor, Yan Chen, was titled Experimental Studies of Culture, Diversity, and Crowdsourcing. In addition to her PhD, Tracy earned a master's degree in economics while at Michigan. She was the recipient of a Barber Fellowship and a Rackham One-Term Dissertation Fellowship. Since last fall, she has been an assistant professor of economics at Tsinghua University in Beijing. We're delighted that she made the trip back to Ann Arbor with her family so that she could be here with us on the stage of Rackham today. Congratulations, Tracy. <laughs> Ricardo Punzelan.
Ricky Ponzolan received his bachelor's and his master's in the Philippines, where from 2001 to 2006, he was an assistant professor of archival studies. He entered the PhD program here in 2006. En route to his PhD, he also earned graduate certificates in science, technology, and society, and in museum studies. The topic of Ricky's dissertation was virtual reunification, bits and pieces gathered together to represent the whole. Margaret Hedstrom chaired his dissertation committee. Ricky was awarded his PhD last summer, and we're very pleased that he has returned to accept our congratulations. He is now an assistant professor at the University of Maryland College of Information Studies. Welcome back and congratulations. Zhao Dan Zhou. Zhao Dan Daniel Zhou received his bachelor's degree in computer science from Shandong University in 2002. Between 2002 and 2006, when he entered the master's program here at UMSI, Daniel worked as a software engineer consultant for IBM China in Beijing. He received his MSI from Michigan in 2007, and that fall entered our doctoral program. In 2009, as a graduate instru instructor, Daniel received the Yahoo Student Choice Award for Excellence in Teaching. In 2011, he received grants from the University of Michigan Center for Entrepreneurship and from Ann Arbor Spark and from the Zell Institute for his startup company, No Sun LLC, which integrates machine learning and big data technologies with Drupal. His research interests include recommender systems, machine learning, human computation, social media, and online communities. Daniel's dissertation is entitled Liberal or Conservative? Elicitation, Evaluation, and Classification with Distribution as Ground Truth. His academic advisor was Paul Resnick. Daniel will be staying on at UMSI as a research fellow, working on commercializing the technology he developed in his PhD study. Please join me in congratulating Danny Zell. We will now begin the recognition of our master's graduates. While they are preparing to approach the stage, let me point out that you may have noticed many of our students today wearing a braided cord, in addition to their other academic regalia. These are service cords, awarded by the Ginsburg Center for Community Service and Learning. The Ginsburg Center's mission is to engage students, faculty, and community members in learning together through community service and civic engagement. The cords recognize students who have committed to over 20 hours of volunteer service in a single term. Of our 151 graduates, 98 have received these cords, which truly reflects the depth of commitments of our students to our mission of service. This commitment is evidenced in their participation in volunteer activities throughout their time at UMSI, including Alternative Spring Break, the A Squared Data Dive, and the Martin Luther King Jr. Service Day. In the auditorium today are dozens of students who gave up one or both of their spring breaks to work at nonprofits and government agencies like the Smithsonian, the New York Public Library, the Adler Planetarium, the Detroit Historical Society, and the US Federal Trade Commission. In January, these students were among the 160 SI Service Day participants who worked on databases at the Huron River Watershed Coalition and the Matai Botanical Gardens, who organized and cataloged the Student Library at 826 Michigan, who performed a heuristic evaluation for the Interfaith Council for Peace website, or who enhanced the Wikipedia entry and launched a Google Plus page for the Ecology Center. In short, they embody the philosophy of UMSI to use information in the service of improving people's lives and strengthening our society. And now, with great pleasure and pride, we present the 2013 Master's Candidates of the School of Information.
Our senior associate dean, Tom Finholt, will read their names. You, or you, somebody else. Yeah, you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to begin with our uh, MHI candidate. And I should note um, that this is a historic occasion. This is the first ever uh, graduate of the Master of Health Informatics program. So step forward, sir. is Jamar Patton. Okay, that's all there are the MHIs. Now we'll do the MSIs. This one will be a bit longer. <laughs> Elizabeth Ann Adams. <laughs> Mohammed. Khalid. <laughs> Tafiq Amari. Congratulations. <laughs> Laura Elizabeth Andrews. <laughs> Claire Langan Barco. Caitlin Barta. <laughs> Allison Claire Bartushevitz. <laughs> Ashley Diane Bigham. <laughs> Anna Grace Boot. Emily Mahood Bowman. Mark J. Bremel. Esty Brennan. Marco Juan Brustein. Mary Edwina Buckner. Omkar Changakar. Angeline Ursula Chang. Ashley Elizabeth Clark. Brendan Emerson Coates. <laughs> Jennifer Evelyn Colby. <laughs> Wen Tui. <laughs> Greg Cunningham. Kendra Yi Cunningham. <laughs> Megan Darlington. <laughs> Kate Davies. <laughs> Jane Newton Davis. Stephanie Gail Dufau. <laughs> Jacqueline Marie DiOrio. <laughs> Nan Dong. <laughs> Kyle Sullivan Donnellan. Jarrett Martin Drake. <laughs> Sh 
Cherie Perez Edmonds. <laughs> Nina Marie Elias. Rocky Fisher. Catherine Ann Fisher. Patrick James Galligan. Elizabeth Michelle Garrett. Stephanie Gerkton. Sharona D. Ginsburg. Miruli Guerrero. Lisa Jackson Hardman. Emma Elizabeth Hawker. Sarah Marie Helm. <laughs> Naomi May Herman Applick. <laughs> Karen Mann Hoff. <laughs> Susanna Marlene Hope. Chunja Huang. <laughs> Wei Tzu Huang. <laughs> Jeffrey Iverson. <laughs> Malcolm Alexander Jackson. Jody J. Jernigan. <laughs> Umchita Joshi. <laughs> Nabil Kaishet. <laughs> Andrew Henry Katz. Alicia Daniel Kildar. <laughs> Ji Young Kim. <laughs> Kyung Kim Ho Kim. <laughs> Jamin Koo. Nick Krabenhoff. <laughs> Derek Andrew Kressler. <laughs> Andrew Lee Kreshak. <laughs> Wesley Scott Lawaka. Stacy Lynn Lavender. <laughs> Rachel Ryan LeDuc. <laughs> Myra Walter Linnemeyer. <laughs> Micah, 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 Micah. <laughs> Holly Little. Yuang Long. <laughs> Victoria Olivia Lungo. <laughs> Yuan Ye Ma. <laughs> St 
Stacy Lee Mott. Shawana Michelle Mazera. Michael Samuel McCarthy. Jin Moon. Morgan Oscar Morrell. Natalie Louise Morelli. Carolyn Elizabeth Mossing. Benjamin Mullins. Andrea Lynn Newhoff. Terrence O'Neill. James Henry Perry. Anna M. Peterson. J.J. Pianchi. Aaron Elizabeth Margaret Platt. Sabarish Rughupathi. Shoma Ray. Emily K. Reynolds. Nikki Candelar Rhoda. Kenny Rosenberg. Caitlin Rosich. Lee Margaret Rupinski. Jeremy James Salfin. <laughs> Jessica Weiss Shangol. Did I get that right? <laughs> Jeffrey Andrew Schwartz. <laughs> Maria Rose Sigfurli Valencia. Michael Senko. Pranay Seti. Chingru Shen. Sarah Reese Sherman. Roy Renyu Che. Kristen Elaine Cherky. Rebecca Louise Chuck. Anne Meredith Simpson. Graham Alexander Slatt. Sarah Elizabeth Steinhurst. Erin Christine Stratos. Lee Alexandra Stutler. Vijay Raj Swami.
Marisa Christina Spiteman. Kirsten Terry. Haley Denise Todd. Philip Mark, oh, do you, what don't want me to read? Tularac. Uh, Tularac. I knew the Tularac. Right? I was just about that. Jennifer Lee Vaughn. Rama Chandra Kishore Vijapuru. <laughs> Haley Marie Finkness. <laughs> Wen K. Wang. <laughs> Jeffrey Emmanuel Warner. Shei Shi Wei. <laughs> Lorinda Louise Wisey. <laughs> Lucille M. Wines. <laughs> Sarah G. Wingo. Chris Wolf. <laughs> Kay Wu. <laughs> and Chi Wu. <laughs> Jin Yan. <laughs> Ang Young. Jiang Wen Yang. <laughs> Chu Yang. <laughs> Bonnie Yu. <laughs> Shohan Yu. Irina Zilikovic. <laughs> Lei Zhang. <laughs> Liam Zhang. <laughs> Yanting Zhang. <laughs> Anandi. Jite. Hello, y'all. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, before I start, I want to actually thank SI for having the webcast, because I just got a text from my mom that she's watching it. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, my name is Sabrish Raghupati, and I'm the student liaison of the School of Information Masters Association. Uh, it gives me a lot of pleasure today to actually announce the winner of the Edmund Lowe Award. So Edmund Lowe was a professor of library science uh, here at Michigan for 23 summer sessions and five full years. Colleagues remember Lowe for his kindness, his sense of humor, his integrity, and his devotion to the library profession. Uh, the class of 1972 established this award in his honor upon his retirement. Uh, the award is given annually to the library and information science uh, student whose personal and professional characteristics resemble those modeled by, the prof uh, by Professor Lowe, specifically, and these are seven interesting points. Uh, the first is dedicated service to the information professions. Second is empathy for people. Third is the ability to inspire confidence and trust. Fourth is industry. Fifth is political shrewdness. 
Sixth, responsibility. And seventh, a good sense of humor. So <clears throat> over the last couple of years, I've had the privilege of interacting with a lot of great students here. Uh, take a look at, a, at the people around you. Uh, I'm sure if there's one thing you guys will remember from your experience at UMSI, it's probably the people in this room. So a big round of applause to each and every one of you. So earlier this term, we sent out an email asking the students to nominate uh, other students that they know, graduating students, who they felt uh, have made an impact in their life at UMSI and to the experience at UMSI. So we got a lot of worthy nominees. And uh, this award, the specialty of this award, it's, it's by the students, for the students, and of the students. So the students nominate other students, and all the student leaders of different organizations, we all get together. And then we try and <clears throat> we go through the list and we try and figure out uh, who satisfies all of these seven parameters. And we came out with a real worthy winner. Um, so I was going to say we'll welcome him on stage, but he's already here. Terence O'Neill. So Terence, as all of you know, is an all-around amazing person. <laughs> he always has a smile on his face, uh, except probably when he's the bad puppet, <laughs> if you've seen his puppet shows. <clears throat> so I had the honor and privilege of interacting with him at the School of Information Masters Association program. He was a really great president, uh, very dedicated, uh, very diplomatic. I really liked the way he handled a lot of these challenges that we got. We got a lot of questions, issues. Uh, call for help from the students, and always uh, Terence stood up for all of these uh, and made sure that they were handled in a very uh, diplomatic, professional, ethical manner. So I'm really grateful to you for teaching me those things. Um, and to all the students as well, he's a really great example for that. Uh, so Terence is also very humble and very smart. And uh, one of his biggest achievements at uh, SI was the service day uh, earlier this year. Terence single-handedly ran the whole thing. He reached out to organizations, he reached out to students, and he did a really good job of it. Um, so thanks, Terence, for that. Um, we got some quotes from the students who nominated Terence, and this is what they had to say. Uh, the first is that Terence is incredibly good-humored, hardworking, and chronically pleasant. <laughs> and finally, uh, the last quote is, uh, I can't think of a better candidate for the Edmund Law Award, and I wholeheartedly agree. Congrats, Terence. Thank you. Okay, now it's my pleasure to present the uh, Margaret Mann Award. Margaret Mann Award was established in 1938 by the University of Michigan Library Science Alumni Society in honor of Associate Professor Margaret Mann upon her retirement. Professor Mann achieved national distinction as an educator. This academic award is made annually to one or more students who demonstrate exceptional ability and professional promise. I'm pleased to announce that today we're honoring two students from this year's graduating class. We ask them to join us on stage individually as we read their names. So envelope, please. The first award goes to Jeremy Salfin. Okay, you may have to stand here while I say embarrassing things about you. <laughs> Jeremy has a BA in History and Literature from Harvard University and a Master's Degree in History from UCLA. Prior to coming to Michigan, he worked at libraries at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, and at the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising in San Francisco. For four years, he was a senior search editor at Yahoo. He entered our MSI program as a university library associate, and for the past two years, has worked at the Art Architecture and Engineering Library. Here at UMSI, he specialized in information analysis and retrieval, 
He served as an executive officer of so I don't know how to say this, so IAR, the Student Association of the IAR people. <laughs> uh, he earned uh, straight A's in all his IAR core courses with a shining A plus in statistics and data analysis. According to one of his nominating professors, his work as a project manager on the NSF funded Rumors Project has greatly accelerated the research progress. He even found time to play an active role in the organizations of, of this year's A2 Data Dive. And now we understand he's off to a great job as an analyst at Kickstarter in New York City. Please join me in congratulating John McCall. Okay, our second Margaret Mann recipient is Aaron Stratos. Aaron, could you please come up here? stand here while I say embarrassing things. Aaron has a BA in English with a minor in Women's and Gender Studies from Eastern Michigan University. Here at the University of Michigan School of Information, she studied human computer action. She participated in alternative spring break both years, first at the Chicago Office of Tourism and then at the National Science Foundation. I hope you helped us out down there at the NSF. Both years, she served on teams to help raise funds for ASB on CrowdRise. During her graduate studies, she worked as an information architect with Thompson Writers TechSmith, and she helped organize this year's World Information Architecture Day in Ann Arbor. One of her nominating professors called her, quote, an exemplary student and a leader among her peers, setting a standard for others by the quality of her work, unquote. Uh, in addition to her strong coursework, she was praised for her outstanding character and engagement. We have no doubt that she will continue to make us proud as her career as her career progresses. Join me and us in congratulating Erin for her Margaret Mann. And now I introduce uh, Jeff to make a special award presentation. Our faculty has been recognizing students of exceptional promise since 1941 in the first award of the Margaret Mann Award. The Edmund Lowe Award was initiated in 1972, as you heard, and like the Mann Award, it was named in honor of a retiring professor. It's been 40 years since a new award has been created, but that's changing today. Among our graduating class this year, we found the inspiration for a new annual recognition. This one will not be named in honor of a retiring professor. Instead, it will be named in honor of a current student of outstanding accomplishment. The monetary award that accompanies the honor is made possible by gifts from alumni and friends of the school through the UMSI Annual Fund. Video, please. Vicki Candelor Rhoda has had a significant impact on the school while she's been a student. She's shown initiative and dedication to service. She's influenced the culture and climate here in positive ways. She's been both a student leader and a good ambassador for the school. And she leaves a lasting legacy. While we aim to create future leaders in information professions, Nikki has already shown leadership inside and outside the classroom. 
creating new ventures and demonstrating a strong commitment. With immense pleasure, it is my honor to make two announcements. First, we have created a new annual award named the Nikki Candelor Rota Student Impact Award. And second, the first recipient <laughs> is Nikki Candelor Rota. During her first fall semester at UMSI, Nikki participated in the original Data Without Borders data dive in New York City. She came back to Ann Arbor fired up with determination to organize the first ever A Squared data dive. She recruited, recruited a great team of colleagues, including fellow student Claire Barco and a UMSI alumna, Emily Puckett Rogers, who were both inspired by her enthusiasm. Together, the three of them, with the help of many others, held data jams and fundraisers through the fall and early winter, building awareness of the event and for the school. Their efforts culminated in a successful weekend-long event in February 2012 that drew over 60 data scientists to volunteer their skills and knowledge to help two local nonprofits analyze and understand their data. A Squared Data Dive was back again this year as Nikki and her partners recruited more volunteers and more nonprofits to participate. They generated more good and more goodwill for UMSI. Thanks to her vision and her efforts, we intend for the A Squared Data Dive to become an annual UMSI sponsored event that connects us with the local community and demonstrates our commitment to service. In addition, during her first year at UMSI, Nikki participated in alternative spring break with a week spent at the Smithsonian, working as a statistician for a paleobiologist. In her summer internship at VMware in Palo Alto, she took the initiative to get involved in her sponsor's research and presented her own research in a poster that won her a trip to the com company's annual conference. She also received a scholarship to the Grace Hopper's Celebration of Women in Computing, the world's largest conference for women in computing. Among her other contributions to UMSI, Nikki has been an executive officer for the Student Organization for Computer-Human Interaction. Thanks to her tireless motivational efforts, we had a team of students representing UMSI at the CHI conference in Paris last week as semifinalists in the Student Design International Competition. Nikki also helped form group advising sessions for the HCI and social computing students. Over and over, her fellow students compliment her for being a great role model, for her encouragement, her optimism, her caring advice, and her infectious enthusiasm. As one of her fans said, and we concur, ultimately, Nikki made UMSI a better place to be a student. While pitching the idea of A Squared Data Dive to her fellow students back in 2011, Nikki's arguments sum up her own accomplishments and those of our profession. She said, we have the skills. We would be doing something good in the world, and it would be really cool. <laughs> and now I'd like to offer Nikki the opportunity to say a few words as the first ever recipient of the Nikki Candelor Roma Student Impact Award. Please join me in welcoming someone who is immensely skilled, who is genuinely committed to doing something good, and who is really, really cool. Nikki. <laughs> I can't tell you what this means to me. Being at the University of Michigan, and in particular the School of Information, has been an amazing opportunity. Not just because of the classes that we've taken, but most especially as far as I'm concerned because of the people that I've shared this journey with. It has been an immense pleasure to go to take classes from all of you, but to be in those classes with the rest of you. My time at SI was about the books that we learn from, but most importantly, the students that I learn from. And I wouldn't be standing up here if it wasn't for all of the enthusiasm that I got right, mirrored right back at me, for all the laughing that we did in the student lounge, for all the grumbling we did about the programming that we were doing, but more importantly, how each of us shaped one another. 
And I was thinking the other day about how far we've come, you know, how much we've learned, all the skills that we have, the things that I can do now, that we can all do now, because of this degree. And it was so exciting to think that now that we've gone through this degree, we know enough to be dangerous. <laughs> we, we know enough to know what to do when we are in tough situations, when we've got team members that are not helping us out, or we've got a deadline that we're crunching against, or we're up against a, a build or a challenge that we haven't faced before. But we know enough now to know what we can do, and that, I think, is what truly makes us powerful. So I'm, I'm overwhelmed um, by this gracious gift, but I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the rest of you. So thank you for making my time at SI so amazing. For those of you who haven't seen it, imagine what she can do when she's given time to prepare her remarks. <laughs> And now it's my pleasure to introduce Ken Barnum, the president of the School of Information Alumni Advisory Board, who will greet the school's newest alumni. Ken. Good afternoon. Congratulations to all of you, both for me personally and on behalf of the School of Information Alumni Society Board. My page is roll out of order. I am prepared, and I'm not. <laughs> so, you're now joining the ranks of more than 7,000 SI alumni. This is a widely diverse group of talented information professionals spanning the globe, representing a vast range of skills and experiences. As graduates of this school, you must appreciate the value that this network is going to give you. Whether it's learning about the things that are not even happening yet as they evolve over the next five or 10 or 30 or 40 years, learning about new places that you might end up as your career takes you around the globe, finding career advice, career mentoring, or just staying in touch. This alumni body gives you, an, gives you a vast access both to your peers that you already have, but also to all those who have gone before you. And as you get a few years out of here, people who have not yet come but enter the workforce and the profession. So I, I hope that as you start or resume professional careers, you'll keep this network in mind. I know it will be incredibly valuable for you, as it has been for me. So getting on 20 years ago, I was, as I was graduating, um, I was only graduating and going to a job because one of my network had the foresight to tell me to go apply for this job that they had noticed that I really should have seen. Sadly, I was procrastinating, and uh, work and real life were just scary, scary things, and I was having fun at SI, or SILS. I'm still adjusting to the first name change. Never get to UMSI, I'm afraid. So while I was, I was doing other things and working at the Bentley and doing all sorts of interesting things within the, the SI community, other people had known of my past experiences and past interest in Soviet studies and Cold War relations. Now, I'm very pleased that that's history and not reality, and I ended up changing careers because of that. But they knew me, and the network then led me to apply for this great job that I never would have seen, never would have applied for, and without SI's, the experience and the credits and the education I got here, never would have received. So through that network, that wasn't, that's not the only time the network has helped me. Jobs have changed. It's not the same world that it was, even that I thought I was going to be entering when I graduated from college before that. You have many jobs, you have many career changes, and that's a good thing. Every time I've had to seek a new position or desire to seek a new position, I've gone back to my friends, my peers from when I was here, and peers before me and after, and they've all helped me. And whether you're conscious of it or not, while you've been here, You've been helped by alumni many times, helped by this network already. Some of them have chosen to give and created scholarship funds for you. But more importantly, many have offered career advice, provided internships, provided all sorts of other ways to show you what the world could be as you graduate from here. I feel personally a great debt towards this network over the years, and I've done my best to repay it as I've gone forward by offering opportunities for internships, for uh, for job interviews, 
just advice and mentoring. I work here on campus, so I've, I've run into a lot of you already. I hope as you go forward that you will repay the debt as I have to next generation, or even to those who have gone before you and are looking for advice. You probably know more about many of the, the innovations in the world than they do. Help each other out when you can. So in closing, please accept my sincere congratulations and be proud of what you've done. I say farewell to you as students with the certainty that no matter what you have done so far, that pales in comparison to what you will be doing in the years to come. Congratulations. And now Judy Lawson. My comments will be very brief. <laughs> In closing, I would like to extend my sincere congratulations to each graduate. You came here from many places, many backgrounds, many points in life. Today you have each achieved something that will impact the rest of your life in ways that you don't yet know. Follow your dreams, and as you do, may you have much happiness and success. At this time, I'd like to ask the deans and the faculty and the guest speakers to exit the stage, followed by our graduates and then family and friends, and continue on across the street to the tent where we have a reception and photos and more celebration. Thank you for coming. Thank you.